This is where the shooting took place. Now I had just turned 15. So I was like super young, you know what I mean? I'm still super young and it's like ridiculous that I've had to go through some of the stuff I've had to go through, but I know that this is not a game, like, you know, like, like people really die, like, from gun violence every single day, like, in this neighborhood. When you're from Chicago, you turn on the news and you see gun violence. Somebody shot two blocks away from where you're at right now. Deadly gun violence is surging in Chicago once again. Two men shot at a crowd during a block party. 500 homicides so far. But I didn't really feel the gravity until it was in my living room. Summer after my freshman year of high school, a young man got shot across the street from my apartment complex. I mean, it was like a typical day. We were going to the store to get something. Got in the car, got to the light, shots rang off. I hear gunshots, and I look out my front window. I was shot, uh, made it out of the vehicle. Ran through an alley and uh, ran through the back of an apartment complex. My back door flies open and in runs Peter. He's holding me his neck, bleeding everywhere. There was a lot going through my head though. A lot of different emotions. Just asking me over and over again, can you help me, can you help me? I've been shot and can you help me? Lucky for him, I was able to say yes. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you all so much for having us today. Like she said, I'm Martine. You already know Journey. We're with Ujima Medics. We want to teach you all what to do if you're ever in a situation where someone is injured by being shot. Ujima Medics is a black health collective based in Chicago that educates and trains people on how to handle and apply first aid to urban health crises. So I'm gonna say a statement. If the statement applies to you, step up and then back. I live in a neighborhood where there's been a shooting. I've had a gunshot before. I know someone who's been shot. The ultimate goal is that we want to get the wounded to an ambulance and into a hospital as soon as possible. We just want to teach people how to maximize that time the most. So that way, instead of being filled with panic, they can instead be useful to a situation and be empowered to help somebody that they love or even somebody that they don't even know. In our gunshot wound first aid training, we start off by going over our first aid principles. So the first one, can you all read this for me? Understand. Then we go into the actual physical treatment of what to do with a gunshot wound. If you have a wound here that's bright red, spraying blood, and you have a wound here that's oozing blood and it's dark and it's gurgling, you want to do this one first. How to talk to the wounded, how to treat them, how to handle them, how to respect their bodily autonomy and things like that. You know, no first aid, right? Can I please help you? Then after that, we talk about what to do when the ambulance gets there. You're going to do the best you can with what you know how to do because someone else is coming to take them to a higher level of care. There is a lot of gun and gang violence that takes place in the city, but in addition to that, there is a lack of health care resources in these communities that are affected the most by gun violence. Not only will somebody potentially have to travel a long distance to get to a trauma center, but they will also have to potentially wait 15, 20 minutes for an ambulance to get there. Damien was a young man that I worked with and he was killed near the University of Chicago Hospital because there was no level one adult trauma center on the south side. He passed away in an ambulance ride on the way to Northwestern Hospital, which is 45 minutes across town. This huge 
hole was ripped in the community that really created this tension that for people, we have to do something. What do we want? Trauma center. When do we want it? Now. We want a trauma center. We want health care. And we're not going to stop it until we get it. So that began this long-term campaign for University of Chicago Hospital to open a, a trauma center and uh, also began Umedics. I was literally standing next to Damien's uh, casket at his viewing when the idea first came to me. I'm not going to teach you how to do anything crazy or out of your scope, I'm going to teach you how to use first aid skills to save somebody's life, okay? To date, Eumenics has trained probably close to 1,500, and about seven trainers have used their Eumenics training to help be first responders in a gunshot wound scenario. So she gets shot in the head, that takes residence. You know, we have no illusions that we are taking steps to, to solve any problem of gun violence. First aid is not a cure-all, but changes the way you look at life. Teaching people how to care for their own body, the bodies of their friends, actually impacts the apathy that people feel about life when you're growing up in a really violent city. So this was the first time that I met Peter after he got out of the hospital. And I'm basically just explaining to him how important it is for his family to get trained by Umedics. We trained his entire family, which is like maybe 20 people, ranging from literally ages 3 to 70. After I saved Peter's life, my role in Umedics kind of went into overdrive because then that just made me feel like, oh my God, everybody needs to have this training. It kind of set a standard for my life that was kind of like, you, you have to show up because look what happens when you do show up. We don't want to be doctors. We don't teach people how to be doctors or how to be paramedics. We want them to get in an ambulance and get to the hospital as soon as possible. But how can we keep people from dying? How can we stop burying our brothers and our mothers and you know sisters? It's not even simply about getting the gunshot wound training, it's just the principle of how you're gonna carry yourself now that you do have this information. And then it also creates a level of community accountability to say, I got you. Like, you're my neighbor, maybe we don't talk every day, maybe we don't have anything in common, but if you're in need, I can help you out. 